Yeah, I don't know what part of putting in a DJ that was up till 4 o'clock in the morning on 11 o'clock autograph session sounds like a good idea, but... Uh, there are going to be some more people coming in because we didn't get to finish the autographs. And, uh, after this is over, they're going to shut the doors, and the people that didn't get autographs are there. I'm going to try to race through as many of them as I can before closing ceremony starts. How are y'all doing? I feel like Jackie O at the end of the parade. I just want, I'm dirty, I need a shower, I need to get out of the car. So, uh, that was a pretty horrible reference for Sunday morning. So, we're off on a roll. How are you guys doing? Y'all doing fun? Good. Yeah. Doing fine, I mean, fine. Who was at the dance last night? Yeah! Awesome. She yes. like, took a picture with me during her set. She's like, let's get a picture. And did the whole MySpace thing. <laughs> so, uh, I, was, I was stoked. And the cool thing about her, she's an international DJ, which most of those guys are freaks. And uh, I met her and she's hot and she's talented and, and she spins any pizza. And she was like, how are you doing? And I was like, who are you? <laughs> Where is DJ Heavy Grinder? She was such a nice person, so I was stoked to go on stage after her. Uh, and I'm going to get her CD sometime today. So, um, Wow, so this is the Greg Ayers panel. This is the Strange panel. Um, I, guess this is, do I, I guess I should do the introduction thing. My name is Greg Ayers. I'm in a, oh, no, wait, that's the wrong meeting. Uh, I, I'm a voice actor for 80 Films in Houston, Texas. Uh, and Funimation Entertainment, the division of the Navarre Corporation in Dallas, Texas, uh, now actually in Flower Mound, Texas. Isn't that the weirdest name for a city? Yeah. Flower Mound. Um, it's, it looks funny on the exit sign. It's like, now approaching Flower Mound. It's like, get your baskets ready. Get your <laughs> it's like, what? Now approaching Flower Mound. Um, let's see, I can't, the horrible thing is I can't talk about any of my new projects because they're all super, super secret. Um, I've got a new project that I really, that, that got a question right off the bat. Well, I'm curious, why are they super secret? Um, there's a few reasons they do. There's a few reasons we signed NDAs. And I'll give you a great one uh, that just happened. Uh, I was recently cast in a show called Garen Lagan. Um, ADV had the rights to that show. Suddenly, ADV does not have the rights to that show anymore. And so, um, and we, we waited and we announced the cast way after we cast the show, but because uh, licensing and things like that are always weird, we don't always know if what we're recording is actually going to be the final voice on the show. We've had, uh, the Japanese have said, you know, we want this role recast, or in the case of Milk Chan, they said Milk Chan's landlord wasn't gay enough. So uh, they, sometimes the Japanese will come in and make an executive decision, and it's, it's important that before we say, hey, Greg Gears is gonna be playing, you know, I don't know, Bat Boy, uh, that that's actually what, what's gonna hit the shelves. So um, another thing is the studios like to have, you know, their moment of thunder. They wait for the right show and the right time to announce the cast. Uh, with, with some of the new shows I'm working on, they're, they're really heavily anticipated titles. And so uh, I, think, I think they wanna have a big bang when they do it. It was hard when we were working on Beck. I knew I was gonna be in bet for almost a year before I could talk about it. By the time we announced that we even had the license to Beck, we had already recorded the first four episodes, I think. So, um, and that was for legal reasons also. That the show was just a nightmare legally. Um, so it's, it's lots of different reasons, but um, back to what I was saying. Uh, I can tell you the stuff I just worked on. I can tell you some stuff that uh, you already know about the old ones, Sayuki, Evangelion, Corona Crusade. Super Gals, all those. Um, most recently, some of the more fun projects I've worked on, obviously Beck. How many of y'all were at the Voices for Peace show last night? Awesome. Uh, say y'all saw my little buddy play the guitar. How cool is it that the inspiration for Koyuki is a kid from Chicago? Like, who would have thunk it? But uh, I was really stoked to, to get to see Sam on stage. He's a really awesome kid who's gonna be a rock star one day and I'll be his roadie. Um, <laughs> Making sure all the making sure all the sleazy girls don't get too close because he's got a girlfriend, ladies. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I loved working on Beck. It was a real personal project for me. Also, having Johnny Young Bosch play my best friend, obviously a big deal because Johnny's a real, not only a real uh, mentor to me, but also a really close friend. And uh, I don't know why, of all the Power Rangers here, why the most relevant anime Power Ranger is missing. I'll never know that. But. Um, 
Uh, so yeah, I did. I just recently finished Xeno Saga, which was kind of cool because I'm the first boy to actually play Junior. <laughs> and the cool thing about that is uh, the young lady that does the original voice of Junior is an actress that I love and respect a great deal. Her name is Brienne Seidel. She is absolutely crazy. Um, and it, crazy in the fun kind of way. And uh, it's kind of nice. Normally when you step into somebody else's role, you're a little nervous. But um, with it being somebody I respect so much, it wasn't taking someone else's job because uh, we could, we knew when we started Xenosaga we could never use the original actors. One, because of the time constraint, two, because of the distance, and most of those are Screen Actors Guild actors. So, uh, and Texas isn't a, a guild or a union state, so uh, we knew that wasn't an option, so at least I got cast in the role of someone that I respect a lot, and so it made me bring it, bring it a little bit harder to that role. I wanted to make sure that I didn't screw up a character that she liked a lot. Um, I did Magic Kano with my brother, who I had just finished doing Nary the Daikon Brothers with my brother. And then we did Magic Kano, which is kind of kind of as dirty and weird as, as Daikon, just no songs. Um, see, I just recorded a new album with Voices For. We did uh, Voices For Tolerance. Uh, unfortunately, there's a track we didn't get on there. I was supposed to do a track by Rod Stewart, and it never happened. But I did do uh, the punk rock song. The first song I sang last night is the song from the new album, and I think that's going to be available for download soon. Let's see, last year I did a rave album with the, some of the guys that worked on music for DDR. Only the last version of the song was so horrible, I'm not telling people the name of the album now. Um, I learned a really important lesson, though, in that. Uh, never trust someone to do your sound engineering who looks like they may be high. That's all I'm gonna say. I would come in like fresh and ready to work, and uh, my sound engineer was just on another planet every day. And I was like, uh, hey, 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 are you listening to me? I need the cymbals down. Huh? What? And I was just, I would call our producer and go, hey, this guy's wasted. And they're like, yeah, yeah, I know, he's like that sometimes. I only have three days to finish this song. Uh, and and so so I did that. That was it, a learning experience. So my next endeavor is to learn all of the digital recording tools, so that next time I record a song, it'll be mine, and I'll do all the work on it. Um, other than that, the other really big thing that I've been involved in for the last four years is a uh, crusade against piracy in anime. Uh, crusade to stamp out fan subbing, whatever the cost, uh, which caused a little bit of drama here this weekend, but. I'm a troublemaker, everybody knows that, so. Um, let's see, that's it that I can think of right now. Look, this, this is y'all's panel, this is where y'all get to ask questions, so I'll, I'll stop talking and let y'all ask questions. Who's got something? Yes. How was you pulled off that perfect British accent from Negi? Woo! Uh, you know what's funny about, he asked, how did I pull off a perfect uh, British accent Negi for, in Negima for Negi? Um, the funny thing is, I love reading anime forums in the States because uh, I think all forums are full of haters. Um, and it was so funny to see, with big haters, they can even sound big. This is bullshit. He can sound like he's crazy. I took that disc to England last year, or a year and a half, two years ago, for a convention. None of the British people had a problem with anything I said. Like, I think the worst, I, I, I think one kind of snobby sub fan said, well, that was decent effort. And I was like, cool. Uh, my favorite remark while I was there uh, was a guy from Wales. And there was all this debate as to whether or not Negi should have a Welsh accent because, you know, he's from Wales. And this guy with this really thick Welsh accent came up to me and goes, What's the matter? You don't want Negi to sound drunk. And I was like, You're right. We didn't. And he goes, Well, on behalf of the Welsh, we forgive you. It was awesome. <laughs> but uh, the, the Brits were awesome. I guess my point of reference for all that, I'm a huge British television fanatic. Um, I, my current new obsession is the Catherine Tate show. How many are Doctor Who fans? <laughs> she's, she's, and everybody, everybody, when I tell people who she is, they're like, oh, I hate her. She's the bride. She's the big mouth, bossy bride. Uh, but she's the equivalent, she's like the Carol Burnett of England right now. She is the most phenomenal character actress you've ever seen. Funny as all get out. And uh, uh, series one and two of the Catherine Tate show just came out in the United States. She's at, look, he's got an exterminate shirt on. Um, I have, in my TomTom, -tom, I actually have the Dalek voice, and it's like, 